My name is Adeni Ke Oyeyola. I'm a practice manager in the Governance Global Practice of the World Bank. And I welcome you to the launch of the very first edition of the Supreme Audit Institution Index. This is based on an assessment of the level of independence in 118 countries. I will be your anchor for the event today. I welcome every participant to this event. Just for your information, we are streaming live on the World Bank YouTube and Twitter channels. We have translations um, to French and Spanish, and of course we are speaking in English, and you should be able to choose your language of preference. We, are, we also have a poll with few questions. We have received about 3,000 responses to the public poll and you can still participate in the poll. For all our participants, please post your questions and comments on the World Bank Live web pages, World Bank Twitter, and World Bank YouTube channel. We are streaming live on all these channels right now. We have a dedicated team of World Bank Supreme Audit Institution experts who will continuously monitor and respond to your questions during this event and even after the event. We will also attempt to answer as many questions as possible in the course of, the, uh, of this conversation today. Just to have a quick run through the agenda today, we will start with a welcoming remark and the launch of the Global Index Report by the Global Director of the Governance Global Practice in the World Bank. Um, this is the practice that authored this report. Then immediately after, we will move on to a brief presentation, presentation of the index. Um, while uh, after the presentation, we'll move on to a panel conversation. And um, you would uh, realize that we have put together today very distinguished practitioners and experts from different parts of the world and from development agencies to discuss this important report. And specifically, to give perspectives from their countries and from their uh, various establishments on the independence of Supreme Audit institutions. Without much ado, I would like to invite Edward Oluwakere, Global Director in the Governance Global Practice of the World Bank, to give the welcoming remarks and launch this report today. Ed, over to you. Thank you, uh, Nike. And um, welcome again to everyone. On behalf of the World Bank, I am pleased to welcome you all to today's launch of the Supreme Audit Institutions Independence Index. I would like to begin by introducing and welcoming our guests today. They comprise of global leaders and experts. Let me start with Jean Dodaro. Comptroller General of the United States of America. Jane has been a great partner in the leadership team of the Intoside Donor Steering Committee. He is a great advocate of Supreme Audit in independence and capacity strengthening. I want to acknowledge his support as well as the support of his staff to the World Bank in developing the Supreme Audit Institutions Independence Index that we are launching today. He has also been supporting the capacity development of SAI across the globe through the US GAO Center of Excellence, which he established some years ago with the approval of the US Congress. Let me also welcome Uzam Alangari, the president of the General Auditing Bureau of Saudi Arabia. Dr. Alangari is my co-chair and a great partner in the leadership team of the Intoside Donor Steering Committee. He is an ardent promoter of science independence and capacity development. He is known for providing funding from his bureau's resources to other Supreme Audit institutions to improve IT and administrative capacity during the COVID-19 crisis. Let me also add that both Jean and Dr. Alangari were very instrumental 
to the development of the SAI Independence Index. In particular, their visits together with other ITUSAI leaders to the World Bank interim president in February 2019 triggered this work that we are launching today. Let me also welcome Elena Lindberg, Auditor General of Sweden. Elena has been a long standing partner in the Intosai Donor Steering Committee, where she not only provides strategic views, but also focuses on the sustainability aspects of uh, Supreme Audit Institution's capacity strengthening. With resources from our audit office, Elena has been instrumental in developing SAI capacity, particularly in Africa and Eastern Europe. I also want to welcome Pamela Muru Ellis, Auditor General of Jamaica. Pamela is famous not only for the excellent work she was doing before COVID-19, but the ability of her office to operate effectively during the pandemic, which has been a good model for developing countries. She and her staff have been auditing all the World Bank projects in Jamaica for several years, and we are proud of her capacity and quality of work. Also, she has been a great collaborator with the World Bank at the regional level, where she has been instrumental to enhancing capacity of CAROSAI, that is uh, the Association of Supreme Audit Institutions in the Caribbean. I also want to welcome my colleague, Carolina Renteria Rodrigo, Division Chief of the IMF's Fiscal Affairs Department. Carolina is an important partner on the public expenditure and PEFA accountability uh, and financial accountability PEFA initiative of donors. Within the broader collaboration between the bank and the fund, we also work with Carolina and our colleagues on improving public financial management, including external audits or supreme audit institutions in client countries. I also would like to welcome Vivek Ramkuma, Senior Director of Policy from International Budget Partnership, IBP. Vivek and IBP are important partners of the World Bank in the overall agenda to promote transparency and accountability in the use of public resources in countries around the globe. And Vivek is also a great promoter of SAI independence. Lastly, I want to welcome Ms. Jahani, Director at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO of the United Kingdom. Maisa is also an important partner on the PEFA initiative of donors and PFM reforms in donor countries. Maisa has also been instrumental in guiding the donor community on SAI matters through its representation of FCDO in the InterSAI Donor Steering Committee. Let me seize this opportunity to congratulate him on his recent promotion to a director's position in FCDO. Finally, let me welcome members of the Intosai Donor Corporation, other development partners, heads and staff of Supreme Audit Institution from across the globe, and everyone that has joined us for today's event. We are gathered together today in a global circumstance that was not envisaged at the time when the Supreme Audit Institution's Independent Index uh, was conceived. And I would like to quickly recognize that COVID-19 continues to impact on lives and economics around the globe in an unprecedented manner. With the goals of eradicating extreme poverty and boosting shared prosperity, the World Bank Group remains at the forefront of the international efforts to mitigate the ensuing elevated risks of poverty and inequality from the pandemic. The bank has committed a record $157 billion in financing, together with technical assistance over the past 15 months. The bank is also working with stakeholders on expanding vaccine distribution and deployment 
especially to developing countries. Besides donors financing, countries are also committing trillions of dollars of own resources to tackling the health, social, and economic challenges triggered by the pandemic. The successful outcome of these efforts depend largely on prudent and proper use of these resources. We know that during emergencies, the risk of fraud and corruption tends to increase, particularly in countries with less matured institutions of governance. Besides their independent audit function, numerous supreme audit institutions retain a secondary responsibility as controllers of countries' exchequers, independently responsible for approving public spending. So the role of independent supreme audit institutions during this global crisis, and indeed at any other time, cannot be overemphasized. Today's launch of the Supreme Audit Institution's Independence Index is a significant step in demonstrating the World Bank's commitment to supporting the building and strengthening of sustainable governance institutions in partner countries. Why? We know Supreme Audit Institutions play a pivotal role in ensuring accountable and efficient use of public resources. And also, they, are, they play a great role in monitoring a country's progress towards attaining the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. As you may know, the World Bank and other donors rely on Supreme Audit Institutions for the external audits of many projects they support in client countries. This stems from donors' commitment to strengthening and increasingly relying on countries' own systems for technical and financial assistance, a trend that started in the early 2000s, following the various high-level fora of the international community on aid effectiveness and donor harmonization. For example, currently, over 40% of World Bank investment lending operations rely on audits carried out by supreme audit institutions in client countries. In addition, for most budget support operations, the World Bank may not require separate audits. So proper use of those resources is therefore assured by Supreme Audit Institution's audit of the country budget resources. Our portfolio of resource-based lending is also growing. And this often requires reliance on audits carried out by Supreme Audit Institutions. It goes without saying, therefore, that the role of Supreme Audit Institutions in various countries is most critical to ensuring the integrity of public finances, including public expenditures, revenues, and borrowings. Supreme Audit Institutions' independence and capacity are fundamental to their ability to effectively perform their roles. So this may explain why donors strongly support site independence and capacity building in client countries, and why all country stakeholders, including all of you connected to this event today, should also support site independence and capacity building. The World Bank, for example, has over the years been supporting the strengthening of SAI capacity and independence, and we remain committed to that. The SAI independence, which we are launching today, is the outcome of the bank's efforts to objectively assess and provide insights into the legal and operational independence of Supreme Audit Institution in 118 countries across the globe. The index will inform and better equip banks, tax teams, other development partners, the InterSci community, and civil society organization to engage in the policy dialogue on Supreme Audit Institution's independence more effectively. Now, one may ask, but why is policy dialogue on Supreme Audit Institution independence important. 
The answer is that size, legal, operational, and financial independence are most critical to the effective functioning of a supreme audit institution in the public financial accountability process. Now, both capacity and independence are important. But why capacity can be procured? Independence cannot be procured. Independence depends on a government's policy. And independence must be granted and guaranteed statutorily and observed in practice. Hence, the importance of our gathering today to launch the first ever Supreme Audit Institutions Independence Index. I am grateful to my team in the World Bank Group's Governance Global Practice that developed the SAI Independence Index and to the counterparts that have supported us along the way, providing country information to inform our ratings and serving as peer reviewers of our assessment and methodology and outcomes. I appreciate in particular the extensive support in the form of quality reviews from partners such as the United States Government Accountability Office, Auditor General of Ghana, Coup du Com of France, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of United Kingdom, and Intosai Development Initiative. Finally, let me seize this opportunity to thank our communication team that worked with the governance experts during the process of preparing the index and also to organize this launch event. Again, a very warm welcome to all of you. And I look forward to a very interesting conversation today and in conversation on the most important element of the public accountability process, that is Supreme Audit Institutions. I now launch the first edition of Supreme Independence in Index. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ed, and uh, thanks for the launch. That's a really a big one. And uh, I mean, we can tell, I mean, we, we, we can continue today to emphasize the importance of independence uh, for Supreme Audit institutions to be able to effectively carry out their work. Thanks so much for that. Um, audience, I just want to remind you that we are streaming live on the World Bank YouTube and Twitter channels. Um, also to remind you that uh, we are also streaming, I mean, we have translations in French and Spanish, so feel free to uh, use any of the languages that, uh, that is uh, easy for you. Also post your questions and comments on any of these, uh, on the Bank Live webpage, on the World Bank Twitter, or the World Bank uh, YouTube channel. Um, so now to the index itself. Uh, this index was put together by a group of public financial management experts working at the World Bank headquarters and in all the regions of the bank. And of course, uh, with engagement in the 118 countries that the in index covered. Uh, the team will be represented today by Shrini Gurazada to present the report. Um, Shrini is lead, uh, I mean, leads the public financial management global solution group in the World Bank. Shrini, the floor is yours. Thanks, Nikkei. Is the Supreme Audit Institution in your country effective? This can be answered by what Ed said. It's fundamental to have independence. And that's the first question we ask. One thing I want all of us as a result of the Supreme Audit Institution, Institution's independent index to take away is, we in the world are far from the ideal level of independence everyone expects um, in the countries. That would be, this is work in progress. I will take you through where countries stand, what are the strengths, what are the emerging opportunities and what we can do together. Let me quickly share my screen to uh, uh, start some slides. So the in terms of background, we have the, February 2019 meeting of the World Bank and Intosai leadership, which Ed mentioned, led to development of a tool. 
we call it InSci assessment tool. In for independent Sci assessment tool. What does it do? It picks the global best practices already existing in uh, ESIs, the InterSci standards, the Sci PMF framework, the PIFA framework to pick up the key aspects of independence. The ease to conduct assessment was one of the parameters taken into consideration to design this. This tool of 10 parameters was used in 118 countries by World Bank teams with expertise on public financial management and um, understanding of Supreme Audit Institutions to assess Supreme Audit Institutions. They looked at not just the norm, but the actual practice based on their country uh, understanding. 118 countries simply because of practical considerations. Wherever we had engagement and ability to conduct the, a credible assessment, we went ahead with that. And in the, in the future reports, we expect to do more countries. So what comes up out of it? Only 19 out of 118 size assessed are rated as highly independent. If you see this map, this is the countries where we conducted assessments. Among these 19, just two, South Africa and Seychelles, rated as compliant with all the parameters at that point of assessment as per the index. This is also consistent with the poll currently running where many of you answered, audience answered saying, Sai independence in your country is insufficient to enable uh, appropriate level of oversight over taxpayers' money. Now, what do we, uh, how do we go from here? If we take the overall, the bigger picture, so the, all the countries are categorized in terms of maturity, A, B, C, D, E, and typically based on scoring. The scoring is for each parameter, a score of either one, where all conditions are satisfied, 0.5, partially satisfied, and zero, when not satisfied, are evaded and clubbed for each of the 10 parameters. So the a maximum score possible is 10. And that brings up this uh, uh, table. In our opinion, considering the importance and non-negotiable nature of Psi independence, every country needs to be at A, scoring all at least or A or B to be considered as uh, highly independent. Right now, most countries have huge opportunities for improving uh, Psi independence. 83% of countries or 99 out of the 118 countries have opportunities to improve. What are the strengths? There are many strengths. As you could see, the scores are high on for many size. So how are, how, where are the strengths coming from? Coming from? They, it's the audit mandate uh, is doing well. Scope and uh, the scope, audit scope autonomy is high in many countries. Size are able to access records and produce um, audit reports. Good news. Are they doing all types of audits? At least 50% of size both have mandate to and are actually conducting all three types of audits, compliance, financial, and performance audits. Here I would mention that performance audits are actually con not routinely conducted in at least 56 of these 118 countries, which is in, in a way also a deficiency considering that in post-COVID world, we look forward as the global community and citizens, uh, we would look forward to performance audits by size of ability to handle future pandemics. So to that extent, it can also be considered as a weakness. Some of the strengths can be undermined by weaknesses on financial autonomy and resource constraints. No money, even if there is mandate, then what's the use? Let's now come to opportunities to improve worldwide. As it comes out, financial autonomy in 90 countries, staffing autonomy in 96 countries, remains a, a, a serious uh, challenge. If size are not able to, through a merit-based process, hire staff of the appropriate abilities and uh, spend money towards the audits, that is a constraint in the overall environment. And that's one of the most biggest area of concern uh, the index is coming out with. Another aspect is the credibility of size in terms of who heads it. 
transparency in appointment of size is not really at one, the acceptable level in at least 72 of the countries assessed. There are some of our assessors reported saying that there are risks of patronage, pliable individuals being appointed as head of SAI, no open and competitive process, and the prime minister, president, or uh, uh, the people in control summarily making selections of uh, the head of SAI, which could also affect uh, uh, the independence. The current ongoing poll on the event page, many of you also voted that this is one of the big areas so, uh, of uh, importance for you on uh, as far as SAI independence is concerned. Constitutional and legal provisions could be improved at least in 69 countries where it's not still at uh, the full score of uh, one. How are regions doing? South Asia leads, followed by Europe and Central Asia. Sub-Saharan Africa and MENA regions, they lag relative to others. Generally, there are significant variations uh, across regions on strengths and weaknesses. So when we look at regions, we need to really contextualize and not re necessarily take a kind of a global uh, view as such. Let me go to some more in, in, uh, in interesting uh, aspects. Do rich countries always get more independent size? Do poorer and developing countries end up with less independent size? The index findings says no. Psi independence has no relationship with the income level we have seen. Uh, low income uh, developing countries with highly independent uh, size, this also reinforces the fact that income with the level is not a barrier for higher level of psi independence. Corruption, if psi independence is high, if there is a strong psi, does it mean no corruption in the country and is the vice versa too? So it is, it, uh, the index says yes and no. Uh, it is yes to the extent that there is some correlation between psi independence and the corruption perception based on corruption perception index. But the correlation is not very high. This is understandable because psi is one of the aspects, but not the only aspect. So this a strong psi, independent and effective psi is a precondition for having uh, a country with low corruption, but it cannot assure that the country would be uh, uh, corrupt, uh, corruption free. So that this linkage uh, tells us that this is still going to be work in progress. And then on the budget, open budget and transparency. So does open budgets and transparency mean that as SAI independence is high or where SAI independence is high, does budget transparency go up? Yes, there is positive correlation, a moderate level between these two with the IBP, International Budget Partnerships, open uh, budget uh, uh, score. So this means that transparency and openness in budget is more important than income level. So uh, in terms of the psi independence and inference one can draw. Now, uh, let's come to like the some way forward in terms of recommendations. So what we felt after doing this exercise on assessing countries uh, psi independence is some steps which uh, all stakeholders can take. Everyone has a role. Size to establish and monitor proactively threats to independence. This time of COVID-19, there is bigger risk of uh, affecting psi independence and there are uh, um, areas of concerns in many, many uh, regions. Governments, it's the job of government to get the SAI very independent. So periodically assessing and strengthening SAI independence and engaging with SAI would be the government's role. Development partners, World Bank and other partners have been supporting it big time in SAI independence. Money, technical assistance, put in everything to strengthen SAI independence and effectiveness. Uh, into SAI and uh, uh, into SAI de uh, development initiative, continuing to provide guidance on ways to strengthen SAI independence and uh, facilitating peer review, uh, peer learning. Citizens and CSOs, very important. Advocacy, compliance with into size international auditing standards, very important for uh, size, which will strengthen also the independence. Citizen monitoring of threats to independence is also another area which could be taken care of. Media, 
identify and expose attempts to mitigate independence. So this is an area which has helped in many countries uh, uh, based on historical instances where media came out to, uh, as a champion for uh, Sai independence. In conclusion, so the, this is, there are great strengths. There is a lot of progress, but this is work in progress. Huge efforts are still needed to scale up the intended level. The report Sci Index is now live, available on this link below. My colleagues in on the uh, on the WB Live page are going to post the link to this website as well as uh, uh, a direct link to download the record the uh, report. Please look at it at your uh, convenience, and it's a pleasure. And I look forward to uh, listening to the global leaders. Thank you. Over to you, Nikkei. Thank you very much, Rini. That's. Uh... I mean, that's very good, a very good summary of what we have in the, in the number of pages. Um, just to emphasize that, um, I mean, in whichever uh, channel you are connecting, there should be a link to the report that has been posted already or that will be posted. Um, so you, you can, uh, at your time, uh, read these and understand what's happening on the run. So the moment is now, um, I think it's now the right time to invite our panelists. Uh, thanks, Ed, for inviting the panelists uh, during your opening remarks. Um, what I would like to do is uh, first invite uh, Musa, Musa Jahani, um, Development Director for Central Asia. I'm sure I can I introduce you as that now. For Central Asia with the FCDO uh, uh, in the government of the, the United Kingdom. Nilsa, I would like you to share your perspective from the FCDO angle and thereafter moderate the session with the other, uh, with other experts. Over to you, Nilsa. Well, th thank you very much, Nikkei. And can I just sort of start off by saying what a pleasure it is to be with you all. Uh, as some of you will know that uh, I've uh, been a major advocate of sci independence, uh, having identified it as a critical issue for fiscal transparency and accountability across the board, and looking especially at uh, issues around corruption uh, and how do we actually create um, environments in which governments are able to do the best they can with the meager resources at their disposal. And even in countries which are well off and well endowed, the notion of having an independent accountability of the resources at government's um, disposal uh, has been never more important than now during the pandemic that we have realized how important it is to have uh, good stewardship of our funds. Uh, and SAI independence underpins all of that. Um, uh, FCDO has been a massive advocate of this from a, for a long time. We continue to do so with support to InterSci Development Initiative, uh, with various in, in, interventions with size in different countries. But importantly, I'm very pleased to say that we have now combined with our NAO in the UK to build capacity in various sub-Saharan African countries, starting with Kenya and Rwanda. Um, it's a pleasure to be moderating this panel. Uh, uh, all of you have been introduced quite eloquently by uh, Ed already, so I'm not going to um, spend too much time in reintroducing you, but I think Jean, uh, Alana, Pamela, Carolina, uh, Hassan, you, you know, Vivek, uh, uh, the introductions given to you speaks volumes about what you bring to the table. And I hope we can have a rich conversation this afternoon. Um, uh, feel free to uh, give your perspectives on the report um, beyond my specific questions, if you like. Uh, but we thought that we would try and uh, give each one of you a perspective on questions that you might uh, address for us. Um, and let me start with you, Jean. Uh, and I know you may have to depart earlier, so, but we are very grateful to you because I know you are a founding member of InterSci and, in, in, and the work that you do is really well recognized. Jean, give us a bit of a perspective on the, on the, on the report as you read it on, on SCI independence and, 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 and its importance. And in particular, given what you've been doing in the past, how do we bring people together around this agenda? Is there, is there a magic wand that you can, you can help us with that really brings a lot of people around this agenda? Uh, but Jean, I'm really interested in your perspectives on that. I am going to ask each 
speaker to speak for about five minutes, and I hope you won't mind if I intervene and, and ask you to wrap up as, as we go forward. So really looking forward to your intervention. Thank you very much for doing this for us. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's it very nice to see you. I appreciate the opportunity to spend time with everyone today. And I first want to express my best wishes to all of you, your colleagues, and your loved ones during this pandemic. Uh, I greatly uh, uh, value the World Bank's uh, report. Uh, their leadership has been terrific. I think Ed and Mirza, uh, or uh, Cerny rather, gave uh, excellent presentations today on the report. Uh, and I look forward uh, to working to on the recommendations put forth, forth on the independence index report. I greatly appreciate the ongoing collaboration with the bank as the role of donor chair of the Intocide Donor Cooperation, as well as with other donor partners, fellow Intocide members and other participants in today's events. And to your point, uh, Mirza, uh, everybody has to put forth efforts to address this issue. Uh, no magic wand, uh, but a lot of effort by a lot of people can advance this cause, which is a noble cause that we need to do to make sure that every side around the globe can independently carry out their responsibilities. Now, the, the important role of size has been underscored by this pandemic in order to deal with, you know, untold uh, uh, public health crisis and the economic turmoil caused by efforts to deal with the pandemic. Uh, you know, the response of governments has resulted in tens of trillions of dollars government spending and economic impacts, increased government debt, strained the resources of governments, many of which are already operating in challenging circumstances. So that's an environment where the Supreme Audit organizations should play a critical role in ensuring that that spending achieves its intended results. And while also providing recommendations for mid-course corrections uh, and to ensure and prevent uh, corruption, fraud, waste, and ensure that these programs meet their objectives. At GAO, we've been doing that uh, for the trillions of dollars that our government, the United States, has put forward. We've issued reports every two months to the public to keep them aware of how this is being spent, what the result has been. We've made over 90 recommendations for actions to improve the government's response, but that's what I was concerned about uh, with size around the world. Uh, so uh, Dr. Alan Gari and I uh, led an effort within Anthosci to create a grant program to help size with continuity of operations during the pandemic so they could operate. A lot of countries, particularly those in developing uh, countries, didn't have the resources necessary to operate remotely and to carry out their responsibilities. So we've given grants to over 50 size uh, representing, you know, more than a quarter of the whole Intosci donor, uh, or excuse me, the Intosci organization of 195 countries. And, you know, we've, uh, the donor cooperation has achieved some substantial results. We've got millions of dollars in assistance. There's enhanced Psi independence through the Psi PMF, uh, which the donors uh, very much supported. We're working it to modernize and continue to develop the standards. Uh, and, uh, but there's much more work that needs to be done. Uh, the report issues today, you know, aligns and reinforce, reinforces a lot of global surveys that IDI has done over the years. And it, it reinforces my concern that the high number of, of uh, size rate low on key aspects of independence. And so there's much more work that needs to be done here in order to do this. Uh, financial independence from other parts of the national government is, is really important uh, that that be taken care of. Uh, and at the same time, the report shows that openness and transparency of government budgets has a positive influence on independence. So the more transparency there is, the more room there is 
for the Psy to operate effectively if it's got the legal mandates and the authority and the financial independence to do so. So I, based on these findings today, I'd like to propose some concrete steps that we could take together to enhance Psy independence with an emphasis on financial independence. And I believe this will enable us to have the greatest positive impact in helping size. Uh, specifically, I'd like to work with all of you and other key partners to do the following. First, raise awareness of this report's findings among the Intosci community, which is 195 countries around the world, our development partners, especially at the country level and uh, civil society organizations. Uh, these can be important catalysts for change if they're well-informed and we work uh, not only at the global level, but individual country levels. Uh, mobilize funding through the Intosci Donor Cooperation Initiative to help size further assess and address challenges to their independence. And I think the donors can have important leverage in working with the countries to help influence positive change toward independence. Uh, there ought to be efforts to coordinate with the Intosci Development Initiative to support its efforts to address emerging threats to independence through the Psi Independent Rapid Advocacy Mechanism, which Intosci has already successfully deployed when new threats emerge, we can move quickly as a global accountability community to help prevent uh, a retrenchment in independence. We're talking about, in many cases now, promoting better independence, but we always have to be wary and aware where independence can be eroded. And this is to help move quickly uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, we want to uh, have a lot of cooperation with the Psi Independence Ambassador that's going to be appointed by the donor into Psi Cooperation. Make sure that person has the full backing and support in advocating for Psi Independence. We're going to continue to highlight the importance of Psi Independence and into Psi's new strategic plan for 2023 to 2028. It's been in our plans. We're going to continue to emphasize it. Dr. Alan Gary and I are leading a task force to uh, put the plan together. And lastly, I would say we need to work together to further mainstream Psi independence initiatives into existing Intosci donor and civil society programs that provide financial, technical, and other support to the global Psi community. So if we or have awareness of this issue, we weave it into the fabric of everybody's ongoing operations to promote accountability, transparency, to fight corruption, uh, to deal with these issues, we can have an impact. And uh, I'm convinced Gene. of that, but it'll take a lot of effort. Thank you very much, Mayors. Th thank you, Gene. That's a fantastic roadmap. Uh, and I, you know, I've been scribbling down as, as you've been talking, and I'm, I, I must confess that I'm really excited about the CRAM, the Rapid Response Mechanism Intosci have launched. Uh, it's some great work in a number of countries already. Uh, and as I, I think you're right to point out that we need to support the ambassador uh, when he or she is appointed. Um, and the whole list of things that you talk about is essentially that coming together. If I can turn to, uh, and Jean, we'll come back to you later. I hope you can stay a little while longer, but. Uh, Helena, if I can turn to you now, then to, to pick up uh, the, one of the points, uh, and I, I'm interested in your reflection on the report, of course, but one of the points that Gene was making there, uh, the underlying thing is about leadership, uh, leadership of the size. You talked about financial uh, um, uh, you know, resources that size have to enable them to be independent, but leadership is a critical thing. And I think if you look at what Srini was saying about, you know, um, weaknesses in the independence of Psy in staffing and in particular in the appointment awarded to generals uh, and the legislation that surrounds all of that. Um, uh, there seems to be like there's a, you know, there, there is a massive weakness there. And I'll be interested in your reflections on that. And, you know, what, what can we do to, uh, to strengthen uh, leadership in, in, uh, and the appointment of leadership? Because once 
in, in many countries where that leader has that independence on, and, uh, and knowledge that you know, they can advocate for change without being easily removed, that really becomes a bedrock of independent of an independent side. So I would like your reflections on that, but just generally also on the report uh, uh, and, and your and your feelings on that. That would be very very helpful. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Mirsa, and thank you for those relevant questions. And let me also thank the World Bank for hosting today's webinar on a very very relevant and important uh, issue. And this report, which is. Uh, very reader friendly and I definitely uh, agree with uh, Jean here that we should work uh, to disseminate the results uh, broadly. Uh, it's a highly relevant uh, report on a very, very important topic. And uh, well, my remarks would be that I'm quite sad to uh, recognize that the results show that much needs to be done to meet the aspirations of the 1977 Lima Declaration on the Independence of uh, Supreme Audit Institutions. Because of course, I think we all agree on this, and Ed was mentioning it also in his opening remarks, independence is the very foundation for the effective functioning of the SAI in promoting good governance, uh, transparency and accountability. And I note with concern that uh, the report shows that a disproportionately large number of constitutional and legal frameworks governing the establishment and functioning of size did not expressly provide for uh, their independence. And this links directly to your question, Mirsa, on leadership. Uh, without an independent SAI, you do not have an independent Auditor General either. So this is crucial. But uh, before uh, commenting on, on the leadership issues, I would also just, if I may, uh, remind you all, I think you probably know that I serve as um, the Vice Chair of Intersize Capacity Building Committee, the CBC, with my esteemed colleague. Uh, the Auditor General of South Africa serving as chair, Tsakani Maluleke. And the CBC is the InterSize Advocate for Site Capacity Development. And we facilitate initiatives in support of size and regions, building their capacities and capabilities to conduct audit in accordance with uh, the international standards, which are, of course, very important. And under the CBC, there is a dedicated work stream for auditing in complex and challenging contexts, also called the AAAC. So here I, I would like to bring to the table also, as Jean did, something that we can work more on and, and to give a concrete example of what we have been doing in the AACC. Uh, AACC. Last year, we developed a kind of uh, background briefing package aimed specifically uh, at parliaments in order for parliaments to, to gain better understanding of the role of size and how to best support them and make use of their audit reports and the findings. Because parliaments, particularly the financial oversight committees or the public accounts committees, have a major role in ensuring that countries have strong size and they can ensure that the sites have the legal framework uh, to, to guarantee their independence. And also they can uh, back up and underpin the international audit standards. And they can also provide the resources to conduct the audits and appoint the heads of size and uh, see to that the size can employ competent and professional staff uh, and I think this is crucial. SAIS are key partners in helping parliaments hold governments to account for the way the taxpayers' money is being used. And they can play an important role in improving the way public services are delivered, the SAIS, if they are guaranteed the independence. So I think parliaments should uh, consider their crucial role and we should work on, on enhancing parliaments understanding of uh, both the SAI as such, but also the, the use of the SAI reports while they examine the use of the public funds. And this will, of course, improve the whole management of public finances, save money and reduce waste and, and strengthen citizens' trust in democracy and help 
and the fight against corruptions. So to, to, to involve the parliaments in, in uh, building the side capacity and have them understand the importance of the independence issue is crucial. And I also, to comment on the leadership issue, I would say that transparency is fine, of course, it's important, but equally important is that the appointment process is based on merit and uh, to ensure the integrity and competence of the Auditor General. This goes to the very core of the credibility of the size. So um, I would say to, to answer your question here, there is an important role for us to work together with parliaments, have them understand their crucial role in both uh, providing the legal frameworks and also providing the right and independent auditor generals to head the size. Thank you. That, that, Elena, that's fantastic. And I'm so glad that you connected uh, leadership issues with Parliament and capacity and awareness of Parliament. Uh, it won't surprise you that, you know, in our conversations with the SAI in Kenya just recently uh, with the NAO, you know, how do we support you? A singularly important thing that came up was, can you help us communicate with the Parliament? Can you help us build that awareness? Because the SAI itself in Kenya recognises the importance of Parliament. Uh, and, you know, not only in follow up and looking at the audit report, but also in the appointment of new auditors, etc. So, uh, absolutely spot on with those points. And I, I do want to connect with you bilaterally on ACCC and what you're doing there, um, because I think parliaments are crucial and so important. It's a difficult one, of course, and maybe we can ask someone like Pamela later on to tell us a little bit about what she might have done with parliaments in Jamaica. but. That before uh, we go to Pamela, I wanted to bring uh, Dr. Uh, Alan Gary uh, into the conversation. I know he too has a pressing other engagement, so he may have to leave. Uh, Dr. Alan Gary, um, you've been a really good supporter. Saudi Arabia has been a very good supporter of side capacity building. Uh, you understand uh, more than anybody else about the resources that size need to do the work that they can that they need to. Uh, and we are very grateful to the support you have provided to InterSci to build capacity of, uh, of other size, as um, Jean was saying earlier. But give us a perspective on, you know, financial resourcing of size and how best can we do that? And how can we ensure that size have the resources that they need in order to be able to carry out the work they, they want? Because I think the report is saying to us that one of the weaknesses in independence is the ability of size to have the resources to do what they what they would like to do. So, if, if you give us a perspective on that, or just generally on your report on the report, uh, we'd be very grateful, uh, Dr. Alan Gary. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mirza. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the World Bank for organizing this virtual event, and most importantly, for developing the SAPI model institutions and independence uh, index. This is a great outcome of the uh, February 2019 meeting. And here I'd like again to thank uh, Mr. Jane Dodaro, the US Controller General for his in initiative uh, and uh, to, uh, to have me and uh, Dr. Cracker, the uh, Secretary General of the Intersai, and and uh, and himself to visit the uh, acting president of the World Bank at that time in the uh, headquarter of the World Bank in Washington. Uh, so I trust that the effort in resolving this global side independence issue in the developing countries will add up to the work of the InterSci in achieving the aspiration of Lima Declaration. The SAI independence has become even more significant due to the, due to the, to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And we should contribute further to enhance and strengthen size uh, effectiveness. And answering 
uh, your question on how the InterSci fund allocated from the PFAC has strengthened the independence and effectiveness uh, of SAI. Uh, in the past year, all SAIs have seen the effect of, COVID, of the COVID-19 pandemic on operations. The IDI survey demonstrated a number of reported challenges during the pandemic, including a lack of necessary information, technology, software, and proactive equipment to ensure employee uh, safety. In addition, many sites are operating at the limited capacity, at a very limited capacity, due to, the, to, due to these challenges. For example, while many sites have moved to remote working env environment, nearly half of the size reported by the IDI survey that they have an insufficient number of laptops. As a result, many sites are unable to fulfill their audit mandate, operate as effectively as they did before the pandemic. As you are all aware, the size play an important role in promoting good governance, transparency, and accountability. It is important that we ensure size to continue to operate at its highest level and enhance its effectiveness. The more the sites are able to operate in the right manner, the more they are able to serve their government and citizens during the difficult times. As a result, they can support their right of acquiring to be fully independent. Therefore, in my capacity as the, chi uh, as the chair of the PFAC and Mr. Chendedaro as the vice, uh, vice chair and the PFAC members with approval of the InterSci governing board, we have allocated the InterSci surplus fund to provide financial support to the affected uh, sites to continue operating remotely and enhance their effectiveness during the pandemic. Additionally, in a, compl in a complementary effort, the, the General Court of Audit in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is helping InterSci uh, meet the increased need for assistance due to the limited fund and has established a Saudi fund to improve SAI performance. Fortunately, uh, we are pleased that both programs have been quite successful. In regard to the second question concerning the weakness emerging from the index relating to the financial and staffing autonomy, uh, when size budgets are in the inadequ inadequate to provide the necessary equipment and sufficient resources cannot be allocated to plan and conduct audits, the quality of their work can be seriously compromised. Without adequate and pro properly trained staff, size may lack the necessary competence to perform their required duties. It is, it is with no doubt that with adequate fund and capacity, size can contribute to good governance, transparency, and accountability by providing credible and timely audit results to the government, civil society, and the general public. The World Bank the IDI, the donors, and the InterSci are doing great work to provide suitable resource for size in developing countries. I believe the more the staff are trained, the, the sufficient the capacity of size would be. From here, I would like to use the well-known saying that quality versus quantity. 
meaning, size, quality for, of performance and audit should be the right level and each side should know what they lack and should work on. This will surely contribute to avoid the gaps of having sufficient staff and ensure uh, uh, affordability. Finally, it is obvious that there is no one size fits all approach and efforts need to be rooted to the context of each country. I hope this answer your questions uh, or maybe observations that you raised to me, uh, some of uh, which were directed directly and some of which I understood it uh, through what you have uh, mentioned uh, to me at the, uh, uh, before I began my uh, speech. Uh, no, thank, thank you so much. No, no. Okay. And uh, also co congratulate the World Bank for this great effort. Thank you. No, th thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alangari, and thank you for the support that you are providing from Saudi Arabia. It's, uh, we all, I often say that there are new donors on the, uh, uh, on the platform, as it were, and you, know, you sometimes put us uh, in the UK and other places to shame with the level of support you provide. And I think uh, you know, the sorts of things that you've been talking about in terms of size needing computers and laptops to do remote work, uh, it's absolutely vital, and it, it's a credit to you uh, that you've been able to step up uh, and, and provide that support. Um, incredibly important because, you know, the whole basis of independence depends on the ability of, the, of, of people to be able to do the work. Uh, so really very grateful to you um, uh, for, for that and for your remarks. I'm going to turn to Pamela, and Pamela, I've sort of... Um, a signal to you that I might ask you about work with parliaments because of what Helena was saying. But I mean, I think when we look at the SAI in Jamaica and what you've been able to do in this pandemic, uh, hats off to you. And, you know, you should be very proud of the way in which you've been able to work uh, despite the pandemic. Uh, performance audit is difficult anyway. And, and I know that you, uh, both in Jamaica, but also the work on Karasai, you're trying to promote better performance audit. And never, you know, when we, you and I first talked about performance audits in Karasai, it was before the pandemic. And the pandemic has told us, you know, it's shown us just how important performance audits are. So maybe you can reflect on that and, and, and give us all the benefit of, you know, uh, um, a few of the insights that you have uh, uh, gathered in this, in this work and, uh, and how we might do performance audits uh, during pandemic, uh, but you know, for, again, the ability to do performance audits is underpinned by the degree to which ties are independent. So please give us some reflections on that. And if you have got time, uh, you know, tell us a bit about how you work with Parliament in Jamaica. Um, but so over to you, Pamela. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Marza. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, let me begin by joining others in congratulating the World Bank on the launch of this 2021 Global Synthesis Report on Supreme Audit Institutions Independence Index. I am pleased with the manner in which the report has been consolidated in simple terms, the key independent issues affecting SAIs and the range of performance globally among sides. Um, it is important and the report has actually brought that out to examine all factors which affect a size independence. Traditionally, some of us have focused on staffing and budgetary independence as a critical independence measures with little or no emphasis on other actor, um, factors. But as is the case for SAI Jamaica, access to records and information, autonomy to undertake different types of audits and constitutional mandate has been, has been emphasized um, previously by um, the other speakers to mention a few play and enabling role for SAIs. As it relates to your specific question, uh, Mirza, um, certainly um, Jamaica, and I'm reflecting on the report, Jamaica alongside Ghana has ranked in, I think in category C, which is that of substantial 
independence. So we would not, I know that, we would not have met the financial and staffing autonomy um, criteria. Despite not meeting the financial and staffing autonomy, as you have indicated, alluded to earlier with the work that we have done through the COVID, Sai Jamaica has been able to build its competence over the last 10 years in different audit types in areas such as performance audit, IT and assurance. And we're currently building our forensic audit skills. So we have been able to institutionally strengthen the size through the government support of our budget in that we, for the last 10 years, I believe we have received just what we have requested. The World Bank has also provided support over the years and um, was instrumental inside Jamaica acquiring an audit software to automate the audit process and actually to improve our IT infrastructure. And Jean spoke to this earlier on about the support given to SAIs in so, to ensure capacity building and support for the strengthening of their infrastructure. So all of this taken together with our ability to perform independently in other areas such as the audit mandate, access to records, right and obligation and audit reporting, and constitutional provision of safeguarding the tenure of the Auditor General would have played a role inside Jamaica being equipped to undertake real-time audit um, on select COVID-19 expenditure. The budgetary and in-kind support received from both the government the IDI and donor partners such as the World Bank over the years would have also been instrumental in bu building our performance audit um, technique and our IT audit. And I, you know, I really want to emphasize the importance of the IT infrastructure and the support that we have received and how that in fact, um, I, I think ameliorated for the fact that we don't have budgetary independence because during the time of the COVID pandemic, and I have shared this before in other fora, 95% of that audit was undertaken virtually and it was done in real time. And that was really solely because of the support that we have received over the years. And having legal access to records, that's unfettered access to records, meant that we could access all the required systems and databases to assess the information at, um, in a timely manner. So in the final analysis, um, aside success is bolstered by having access to adequate resources. And of course, it is preferable that preferable for this to be um, facilitated through legal authority or constitutional authority. But we know as the report um, sets out here that the majority of sites don't have these um, access to um, budgetary resources or to the necessary human resources or management of these resources in an ideal manner. But that can anyway be, 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 be supported the, the size capacity building can be supported through the support of donor partners, through the support of agencies such as IDI. And I must say that Jamaica is one of the size in the Caribbean that benefited from the InterSci rapid response uh, mechanism that has allowed us to acquire a server that will that will actually enhance our communication between the SAI and the various ministries, departments, and agencies. And this is critical at a time like this because we are actually moving from a workplace working environment to a work from home. So that support is very critical for us and to ensure that we maintain the the kind of um, effectiveness that, that is required of us as a Supreme Audit Institution. So commitment from go, do, government, donor partners can make a tremendous um, difference to a, size, to a size performance. Now, Ms. Ra, I don't know if you want me to go on to speak about my relationship um, with the parliament at this if point. If you can, in a, in a couple of sentences, if you can, uh, but I know that the time is pressing uh, and I could right. speak with you all afternoon, actually, Pamela. <laughs> Um. Okay, um, well, can I say that the approach that I have taken um, thus far is through, by the way, of um, an orientation session with the members of the Public Accounts Committee, and I generally try to do this once um, per year, or when there's, or once every election 
um, rotation where there is a change in the membership of the public accounts committee. But so I do not have a standard structure in place where I communicate on a regular basis with the parliamentarians outside of my report. We provide support to the public accounts committee by how we communicate and report our information to them after the report um, has been tabled. But I try, um, Mirza, not just through, not just to the, to the parliamentarians, but to the general public to write my reports in such a way that it is easily understood and that any, anyone can appreciate what the issues are by using simple language and write it in such a way that it is not seen just as an indictment on the agency for which uh, that is being covered, but hope that it will be used as a tool for improvement generally. Fantastic. No, that's, that's, that's uh, accessibility to reports is a, is a very important uh, aspect. Um, and you've been kind enough to say, you know, all the support that donors and everybody has provided. But if I may say so, it's also a lot to do with your leadership, the, the, the way the, the SAI is performing. And talking about leadership, I want to turn to Carolina, where she is also showing tremendous leadership. And I think the IMF has really astonished a lot of us, at least me, and I've been in development for a long time, uh, with the call for receipts to be kept uh, with the COVID uh, lending. Uh, and now, as I understand it, is now the call has gone to check the receipts, which is uh, absolutely spot on and absolutely right for for supreme audit institutions. And we can only keep, it's only useful to keep the re receipts if somebody can check it. And you know, checking means all the sorts of things that Pamela was saying. You know, accessibility to information, uh, to resources, to be able to check those receipts. So. Perhaps, you know, Carolina, you can, you can expand a bit. You can tell us about your reflections on SAI independence and the report, but say a little bit more about, you know, uh, how you feel IMF is progressing on this agenda and what more can we hope for uh, from your organization? Uh, over to you, Carolina. Thank you very much, Mirza. And first, let me express my gratitude to my World Bank colleagues for giving the fund the opportunity to share a few reflections on accountability and independence of Supreme Audit Institutions. I would also like to congratulate them for releasing the Supreme Audit Institutions Independent Index and this excellent panel. It is a timely instrument to shed some light on the challenges we will have to address in the coming years and provides a very useful global map of key independent issues, helping to identify areas of intervention and good practices to to inform capacity development support. It is impressive work. From the IMF perspective, external auditors are key partners. We work with our member countries to promote good governance and fight corruption. Economic governance issues are fully integrated into our surveillance, lending, and capacity development operations. Strengthening controls and oversight of public expenditure and revenue, publishing audited accounts of public sector entities, Fostering accountability have been for years core elements of our advice to our membership, <clears throat> and even more so since the outbreak of the COVID-19 crisis. As government around the world has struggled to deliver responses to this unprecedented crisis, we at the fund provided swift and substantial relief in the form of upfront emergency disbursements. But at the same time, we were never blind to the risks of corruption and misuse of public funds in a crisis. As many countries lowered ex ante controls to be able to spend quickly and support people and firms, transparency and accountability became even more crucial to ensure that the spending reaches those that need it. And an independent Supreme Audit Institution is of course a central instrument to mitigate these risks. <clears throat> Our managing director has some um, this up in her very well-known world, world of, of advice for countries. Do whatever it takes, but keep the receipts. Why keeping the receipts? To safeguard public resources. To make sure that everyone knows what that, that an independent auditor will be able to hold accountable officials who in many countries have been granted extraordinary powers to do whatever it takes. For this reason, 
countries receiving IMF emergency support can commit to conducting independent audits for their COVID-19 related emergency spending. This is a strong signal from the fund that we expect Supreme Audit institutions to play their watchdog role. Whenever feasible, we encourage innovative approaches and real-time audits to be able to identify mismanagement or fraud as soon as possible. Why? Because the objective is to make sure that the, that the resource is effectively used to save lives now, and we cannot wait a few years to get this assurance. <clears throat> we know that the emergency response to the pandemic is not over and will require a sustainment engagement from all of us. We have, we have also to be prepared for what comes next. Many countries will have to manage the long-term fiscal impact of the pandemic, including high levels of debt and larger stock of contingent liabilities. At the same time, they are launching massive impressive investment plans, increasing debt levels or revenue collection to finance them and exploring innovative financing mechanisms. Auditors will have to, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Auditors will have to play a key role to ensure that public investment creates impactful and transformative infrastructures that support a healthier and greener recovery for these generations and the ones to come. In this context, the question of the external auditor's ability to have accountable those in charge of managing public resources is central. I and mean, for that, independence is key. It gives us the insurance that the auditor's opinion is based on facts, and that their work is guided by their own best judgment without any undue external influence. I have no doubt that the Supreme Audit Institution Independent Index will shape our engagement with some countries. At the same time, we also expect the size to deliver results, to conduct timely and risk-based audits, to publish their reports, and to engage with parliaments and citizens to make their voice heard, as has been discussed earlier today. Indeed, Size will only truly play their watchdog role if they are loud enough to make sure that their reports are followed by action. In the fund, we, don't, we do not have only expectations. We are also ready to support and help member countries. The IMF has set up a project specifically focused on strengthening the legal and institutional capacity of size. It aims to help them producing and publishing audits audits that support accountability for the use of public funds in the emergency response, with a particular focus on corruption vulnerabilities and indication, indications of misappropriations. We see this initiative as a starting point, and we are looking forward to hearing from the Supreme Audit institutions how we could best support them. Let me conclude by stressing that the pandemic has eroded the trust in governments, and size could play a leading role in rebuilding trust, a key factor for economic and social de development. After all, they are the ones who can determine if the government has kept the re receipts. Many thanks for your attention. Th thank you very much, Karina. And there's so much in there that uh, I want to follow up and, and discuss with you. And it's really good that we know that you have set up a program to strengthen SAI independence. Uh, we'd like to, I'd like to learn more about that uh, in the fullness of time. But you know, I think you're also spot on around debt, debt stress. There's going to be a lot of debt stress. And one of the things that, in fact, uh, with the next speaker we've been talking about with Vivek is debt transparency index. And how do we know that debt transparency can be, uh, 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 you know, how can debt uh, be actually understood by the wider public uh, as well as parliament? Um, so thank you very much, Karina, for those points. Uh, we'll pick some of those up later, but I want to turn to Vivek. Uh, Vivek, you all produced a very good report um, around accountability during the COVID period and around the degree of transparency uh, in budget processes. Uh, and one of the things that we all uh, read about uh, from your reports was an accountability gap. Uh, and the degree to which that accountability gap exists, uh, um, is there a correlation between that and Thai independence? Uh, Srini put out some nice um, uh, charts for us earlier and was not conclusive in the correlation between budget openness and um, uh, Thai independence. But uh, give us a flavor of that accountability gap and 
uh, IBP's impressions on the importance of, of, of SAI independence. Thank you. Thank you, Mirza, and hello, everyone. I'm delighted and honored to be part of this discussion. Uh, our open budget survey has created a platform where local civic groups in 120 countries can engage in dialogues with their finance ministries on their information needs regarding government budgets and implementation reports. Unfortunately, far too many governments are not publishing key and basic information on their budgets. We believe that SAIs can help improve budget transparency in at least three ways. The first and simplest action that SAIs can take is to publish timely reports on audits that they have conducted. In one third of the countries covered in our last open budget survey, SAIs had not published audit reports within 18 months of the end of the fiscal year. Second, SAIs can conduct special audits on government compliance with relevant information disclosure laws, including on budgets. More than 100 countries have freedom of information laws. But in far too many of these countries, the laws are not being properly implemented. As a result, the public continues to be denied access to information on a variety of government actions that affect their lives, including information on public finances. And finally, SAIs can conduct audits on the credibility of government budgets. Our research has shown that many national budgets are not fully implemented. One of our studies found that 22 largely low-income countries failed to spend nearly 30% of the budgets that had been designated for the purchase of vaccines over an eight to 10 year period, even as they declared stockouts on 94 occasions. Transparency is a critical component of accountability and of the social contract between government and citizens. But public trust in government is low. In fact, historically low in some countries at a time when too many are suffering from the debilitating impact of the COVID crisis. While governments around the world have committed to spend nearly $16 trillion to tackle the crisis, the public needs to be convinced that these vast sums are in fact being used properly and reaching those in need of relief. SAIs can play a critical role in assessing the use of public funds. But SAIs must be seen as objective institutions that are not controlled by the government machinery. And objectivity can only be assured if SAIs are fully independent institutions. We're deeply concerned by the findings of the new report issued by the World Bank today, which shows that one fourth of the SAIs assessed have low levels of independence. The report also shows that the areas on which SAIs are weakest is financial control and staffing autonomy. If trillions of dollars can be spent on public programs, it seems unwise not to fully fund audit functions or empower SAIs to be able to recruit the necessary personnel to conduct audits. We believe that civil society groups can be crucial allies of SAIs in these times. Just in the past year, when the independence of SAIs in countries such as Cyprus, Ghana, and Myanmar was threatened by powerful executives, non-state actors, including civic groups and the media, rushed to defend the SAIs. Civic groups can also help direct SAIs' attention to areas of public concern. For example, in South Africa, results from social audits of water and sanitation services conducted by local civic groups in townships have helped the SAI to prioritize issues that merit further investigation under its audit program. It's imperative that the international community acts on the findings from the World Bank report. For our part, we stand ready to support actions that can enable SAIs to be truly independent institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Vivek, uh, really eloquently put. Uh, um, I mean, I think that the fundamental issue around trust in government and the degree to which it might be eroding uh, uh, has come to a fore very much across the globe um, uh, in light of the pandemic, if it wasn't there already. And I think certainly 
the open budget surveys uh, contributes to helping us rebuild that trust to the extent that we can. At least it identifies where the weaknesses are and SI independence is critical amongst that. Um, I want to turn lastly to um, Ed um, and to, to ask him to reflect a bit on the report. Uh, we've heard quite a lot from your colleagues, Ed, and congratulations again for bringing us uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, to a publication mode. I know you and I have spoken about it for, for, for many, 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 many uh, times over, and congratulations also for bringing InterSci leadership to the World Bank President's Office and building this momentum around the importance of doing this report. Um, what are your reflections? What are your reflections, particularly around this issue of trust in government and the degree to which, you know, sci independence is a bulwark against corruption, uh, which we know is, 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 is there in many countries. And in fact, it is a reason why trust is eroding um, in, in many ways. Uh, so your reflections on that would be helpful. I don't know if uh, the moderators will give uh, will, how much time we'll have beyond the the top of the hour, because I wanted to place one or two questions to everybody. But go ahead, Ed, and we'll see how we go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss, uh, and uh, thanks for your support all the all the way, well, which I alluded to uh, earlier, and also just to to again acknowledge also your work and your voice on this issue of independence. I know how many times we've uh, spoken about uh, about this. Now, uh, when we look at the issue of trust, trust in government, uh, there are two uh, dimensions or two important aspects to, to securing trust, okay? One is really about uh, service delivery. So the citizens getting what they require of government, okay? And another important aspect is really transparency and accountability and citizens having the information and government being responsive in terms of demand for information. If we look at both aspects, uh, the role of Supreme Audit Institution is really very central. Supreme Audit Institutions audit or public finances and so on and so forth can help ensure that resources are used properly to deliver the services so that citizens are happy. And so that aspect of gaining trust in citizens is met. Then in terms of also making, be, I mean, government being transparent, making information available, being accountable, uh, again, the work that Supreme Audit Institutions do can help to be able to secure that. So they do have a central and important role to play in helping a government to hand trust of citizens. Uh, now, coming to the issue of corruption, which is also closely related to the point we are talking about, I mean, we are just discussing now. If you have a situation where there is too much corruption in a country, uh, obviously you don't expect uh, citizens to trust government. Now, uh, question then is what is the role of Supreme Audit Institution uh, in controlling uh, corruption? Uh, we all have to recognize that corruption is a wicked problem. Okay, if not, I think it would have been eradicated uh, years, I mean, ago. Now, no one particular institution can be able to really solve the problem of, uh, of corruption. I think what, we've, what we know, and a lot of experts will agree with, is that various stakeholders have roles to play. There are roles for civil society organizations to play, roles for citizens to play, roles for uh, various uh, uh, other stakeholders like the international community to also play in the in, in fighting corruption. Uh, but then Supreme Audit Institutions, why we will as finance prof professionals say, uh, it is not the duty of, a, of an auditor to, co uh, to control corruption, that that responsibility lies clearly on the government or the executive. Uh, it is also reasonable for citizens to expect uh, uh, Supreme Audit Institutions to contribute to the efforts to, to control corruption. And I think in the way they do their work and how they make their reports more, transpa uh, more uh, transparent and make that available to people like uh, Pamela was explaining uh, in response to your question, I think that can go in some way to contribute uh, uh, to, to that effort. Then also an additional point I would like to make is that Supreme Audit Institution can work with other oversight 
uh, agencies and ensure that all the various elements in the oversight and accountability structure of a country do complement each other or reinforce this, uh, uh, I mean, or reinforce each other so that then you can have a, a kind of a synergy where the sum of the various parts will be greater than the, the individual uh, uh, components. Uh, so uh, that's the way I will see the role of a Supreme Audit Institution in controlling corruption. Thank you. And thank you very much for that. Um, I've been told I have a few more minutes to perhaps pose a few of the questions that have been coming in and have been passed to me. I think that the first question comes from Thomas Bokere, uh, and he asks, how can SAI collaborate with national commissions against corruption? Uh, I, I wonder whether you can expand on that a little bit more, Ed, in what you were saying about uh, various parties needing to come together yeah, what is the role of national commissions uh, and how can uh, size collaborate with them? What should the size do specifically? The national commission, are you talking about national commission for corruption or? I would say national, he doesn't uh, spell that out, but I think he refers to national commissions yeah. against corruption. So they're in many countries. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. I mean, as you know, in a number of countries, you have all these various commissions set up and you have Supreme Audit Institution. I think a most fundamental weakness in the overall architecture is that they don't tend to communicate with each other. And you have separate reports produced, but those reports are not leveraged on. Now, there are countries where the auditor, uh, I mean, the auditor general or Supreme Audit Institution can audit an account, they have their findings, some of the findings border on misuse of public fund or uh, even complete theft of public fund, okay? Then they produce their report, they table that to parliament and maybe sometimes they make it uh, public. But then you have the oversight agency, the anti-corruption commission, they don't take on that report, okay? And then follow up with investigation, rather they maybe depend on some people reporting uh, corruption to them, or they actually looking out and finding some uh, corruption issues and then following up. So, uh, so that's an example of how probably you have that weak link and we could close it. So it should be possible that when the Auditor General has produced their, their report and uh, the other uh, relevant oversight agencies can pick on the report if there are things that needs to be actioned by them, like you have corruption issues and so on and so forth. They should just simply be able to take it forward and act on, on that. Just imagine if the Auditor General has done a very nice report, they have all the evidence, they've uh, made the recommendation. Uh, the prosecutor in the anti-corruption agency already have enough thing to work on to be able to take the case forward. But often, uh, that more than, uh, I mean, often, they don't take this forward. They don't act on the reports of the Auditor General. Thank, thank you, Ed. That's, that's, that's really very helpful. Um, uh, another question, and I hope it answers uh, Thomas's question. Um, there are another question is from Suba Rao, uh, which is a very interesting question, which I'm going to ask uh, Pamela and maybe Carolina to come in and respond to. How do we judge the right level of funding for Auditor Generals? Uh, Pamela, do, you must be thinking about this on a regular basis. Hello? Right. Um, you know, in fact, in reviewing the report, I considered, I mean, we only have two countries of the 180 countries that have met all the criteria. And I considered, um, is it possible for us to determine what the right combination of independence criteria elements would, would, would be um, in the absence of being able, you know, to, 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 to actually have perfection. Um, Mirza, it's so difficult to answer that question because I think there are so many factors that you have to take into play. It comes back to the combination and the quality of your resources. So you can have, and I think it is Dr. Alangari or Jean who spoke about quality over quantity. You may not have, you may not have access to um, unfettered, unlimited resources, but you can do so much with the little that you have based on the training and the experience and how you combine all of that to get um, 
optimum um, output from the resources that's provided to you. The report also showed when there was a correlation to see whether income had any impact on the independence criteria for many. And it saw that there wasn't really a positive correlation there. So it really comes back to the disposition of the SAI, the leader of the SAI, but also the will of the government, even in the absence of an ideal situation, the, 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 the mood of the government to provide support to the SAI. So much can be achieved just by actually tapping in on the resources that you have. And I have said, I think I'm speaking from a privileged position that for the last 10 years, I have received all that I have requested, but I have not asked for everything that I have needed. What I've sought to do is to utilize in the best way what I have received to make it easier when I go and ask for more to get that because it would have already, I would have already demonstrated what I can do with the little that I have. And I think that's the best answer that I can give to try to make the best of the resources that you have available to you, knowing where you need to go ideally and do so incrementally. Because I believe if you, if you get too much at one point in time, you may not use it optimally. We have to yeah. take it in, in stages. And I think that's my best response at this point, that's, Marissa. No, that's a, that's a very good response. I think uh, Vivek was talking earlier about budget credibility and many governments fall uh, on that criteria. They tend to have budgets, but they don't actually expend them well. So I think your advice is really well heeded, uh, Pamela. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, Anike, I don't know if there is any more time. I know I'm over by about seven minutes, but I did want to conclude by thanking the panel. Uh, I've actually learned quite a lot. I'll be reaching out to some of you individually uh, on the work that you're doing uh, in these areas. Um, congratulations again to the bank for an excellent report. I, in the sense that uh, what Pamela was saying, it's simple, accessible language people can read. Uh, there's always room for improvement, and there will, this report will improve over time, but it's good to have been at the uh, genesis, at the launch of the report. So thank you very much for the privilege of moderating this conversation. And with that, uh, over to Nikkei, I believe. Thanks very much, Mirza. And um, of course, uh, to all the panelists. Actually, as, as you continued, I was just scribbling, and now I don't even know what to summarize. I mean, this, is, this has been a very rich uh, conversation. And uh, thanks for your you know, very good uh, moderation as well. So um, I guess uh, whatever has a very good beginning would uh, uh, probably have an end. Like you said, Mirza, we're about eight minutes above uh, the agreed time, but uh, definitely time well used. Um, so let me start by first thanking our panelists. Um, I hope I'm not going to leave any names out because uh, this involves a very uh, good people, starting with Mirza, but also thanking Jean, um, Elena, um, um, Dr. Algari, um, Pamela, Carolina, Vivek, uh, thank you very much for all the work. Um, let me come, uh, and of course, I'd like to thank everybody that has supported our panelists in uh, you know, being part of these events today. I know there are quite a lot of people that are working in the background. Thanks so much for all the great work. Um, uh, and to everybody that has participated in the event today, I hope this has been a very rich conversation for you. Uh, please keep uh, sending in your chats, keep sending in your comments, and as much as possible, even after the event, we will try to address it. Let me come in us to the bank and start by thanking Ed for the very strong leadership uh, in this work. I mean, uh, this has uh, taken quite a lot of very good efforts, let me say. And uh, like Pamela said, and many people agreed, the results came out uh, very user-friendly and easy to understand. So Ed, thanks very much for your leadership in this very core aspect of work. Um, really happy to be in your team. Um, then, uh, before I go to the core team, I'd like to thank our communications uh, team who have been very core in um, helping us to make this uh, 
a very important uh, and well um, advertised and well attended event. So thanks so much. And of course, to the IT team, we couldn't have done this without you. So thanks very much for that. Um, I would like to now uh, focus on the team that uh, worked on this report. I would not be able to call all the names. Uh, I mean, I I'm hiding behind not wanting to miss any name. But I just want to recognize the fact that this work was uh, done with many colleagues, both in, um, in the country offices, but also led by our, our regional practice managers. So thanks so much for all the great inputs. And to the core team uh, that worked on these, many are connected right now. Many are still on the chat trying to respond to um, all the comments that are coming in, both in English, in French, and in Spanish. I say kudos for a, for a great work, uh, very well done. So thanks for all you do and all you continue to do. Like we said, this is the first, and there's still quite a lot of work to do. So um, let me uh, then take this opportunity again to say, Thanks for participating. We really look forward to your support in all we do to strengthen uh, the Supreme Audit institutions and public financial management generally and governor governance on a larger scale. Thanks very much, everybody. And do have a very great day ahead. Bye.